right, good evening. How's everybody doing this evening? Glad to see everybody here. Um, I'm David Borowski, I'm superintendent of schools. I want to welcome everybody here this evening. This, this meeting is for the, uh, the restructuring of Lake Asbury Junior High next school year to include some other schools that are then going to be incorporated into the school. How many of you have driven on Sand Ridge and said there's a lot of people on this road? Right? We, we all know that one of the blessings of, of Clay County is that it's a great place to live, a great place to raise a family. It's also a great place to go to school. One of the challenges is when there's that many people that move into our area, it creates those kinds of things, right? So here we are today. We hope today that we can, one, give you all the information that you need to know. Notice that we're starting real early. We're in November. We actually started talking about it in October in order to prepare us for August, right? Because we realize that as parents, you have information you want to settle in your mind, I totally get it. Uh, just as a person that's had two children go through the school system, and, I, and as a parent, I've been to a meeting like this one three different times as a parent along the way. So we're familiar with the angst that, that parents might have, or just simply curiosity, like what kinds of programs are we have for students? What are the benefits of those kinds of things? I, but I've got a whole team of people here that I want to take the time to introduce. First and foremost, we have our school board member, Beth Clark here. Beth, if you'd like to. Then we have some folks that are going to provide some information for you. Uh, one is uh, Paul Beeman. He's our supervisor of planning. He's going to give a presentation on the attendance zones and how that all works out and why we're here this evening. And then we have Lance Addison, who's the director over that department. And their boss is Bryce Ellis, the lady that you see there. Uh, this is Treasure Pickett. She's the chief of secondary education for those kinds of programming issues. Then we have our illustrious principal right here at Lake Asbury Junior High doing a great job, Lydia Creel. Uh, before some of you came in, we had the band in here, the cheerleaders. We had all kinds of groups of people. And you see some of the Lake Asbury faculty still here for questions that may happen related to school itself uh, as your sixth grader transitions. Uh, and then we have the transportation supervisor, Matt Hayes, for any transportation uh, challenges. We also have several principals from the elementary schools, and I saw the principals come in, and now they're hiding. So if you're an elementary principal, raise your hand. Okay, you can see where they're hanging out. Probably your, your principal is in that group that you see around there. So. And then we have some folks from ESE. We have all kinds of people here. And so the, the purpose to today is simply to give you some information, make sure that you know um, the plan for next school year when it comes to Lake Gadsbury Junior High. Probably can't see it right now, but out past that blue tarp that you see out there, they're building a 32 classroom edition brand new uh, in order to accommodate some of the growth that we have here in, in Clay County within our schools. So the plan is this evening, we're gonna have a presentation that you're gonna see up on the screen uh, by Mr. Beamett. Then the principal of Lake Asbury Junior High is gonna talk, but at some point, you might have a question. So what we ask is so that we can record the question and keep track of it, and make sure that it's organized. We gave you a card. Some people have already filled out questions already, like, hey, this is my question. I already know what my question is, right? So you might, during the middle of the presentation, say, hey, I got a question. If you could, please uh, raise your hand. We can get some cards to you. Or you can go up there and get a card from the table and write your question down. This way we can answer all the questions that people have. If on the off chance there's a question that requires further research, we would then have your name in order to go ahead and, and get back to you in a timely fashion. So that's the plan for this evening. We think the meeting should last approximately a little less than an hour in order to give you the information, ask, answer the questions, and those kinds of things. So just to kind of set it up that way. So first on the dock, we have Mr. Beamit. Mr. Beamit, if you'd come forward and tell them a little bit about growth management in Lake Asbury. You know the two areas of our county that are growing fast that require a little bit of relief. Oak Leaf, the Oak Leaf area is another area, as well as Lake Asbury. A similar plan in Oak Leaf is the one you're you're seeing here today. So, Mr. B. Thank you, Mr. Broski, and thank you all for coming tonight. I'm excited about sharing this presentation. 
First of all, I want to tell you a little bit about what I do and uh, my role with the school district. I am considered a planner and I help the school district understand where new students are coming and where we need to build schools in the future and actions we need to take. So uh, uh, what I hope to do is enlighten you about the growth and capacity challenge that Mr. Brosky alluded to here a moment ago and explain what the solution is that we come up with that came up with as a as the um, school district team, and then uh, give you some more detail around the boundary changes and how they affect you. So Mr. Broski mentioned the traffic on Sand Ridge and construction. Uh, I grew up in this area and I've seen it grow. And what you may not realize, or at least you know, I did, is the extent of the growth that's occurring in this area. It's, it's really tremendous. Uh, on the left hand side you see an image of Clay County and inside that square is, is Lake Asbury uh, School, Lake Asbury uh, area. And all of those colored sections that you see, those all, um, shapes, are all active development. So while you're draw, driving down Sandridge, you can see the construction on your left. When you're going down Russell Road, you can see the construction on your right. And when you're on, on the Henley, you can see it. But it, it is extensive. and. Uh, it's something that we need, as, a, as your school district, needed to address. With all that growth comes, uh, the, you know, students, of course, and then the capacity. And in this slide, you see the elementary schools that are affected here: Copper Gate, Dr. Sillet, uh, Rideout, etc. On the left-hand side, you see a number. It's called overall utilization. So that number is a percent utilization of a particular school, which includes not only the brick and mortar, so a facility like this, but the portable buildings that are also a part of the school. On the right hand, to the right of that is permanent utilization, and that is just brick and mortar. And that's the number we try to go off of because one of the main objectives we have within the district is reduce the number of portables. So we're always kind of looking at permanent utilization as the number uh, that's most important. And as you can see, we've got some pretty high numbers there. 136% uh, for Dr. Zinlin. Uh, Lake Asbury is notable at two, almost 242%. You're thinking, holy cow, Paul, 242%, that's not, that's not good. And what I want to assure you, in no shape or form, is, is, is the school district of Clay County out of uh, any type of compliance with the federal, with the Florida Department of Education. We're all within, within compliance there. Um, and uh, I can share more detail about that if you'd like after the, after the meeting. But uh, still, these are utilization numbers that we want to address. And below that, you'll see the growth potential. So this is, those numbers are today, I mean, right now. But below, you see 7,000 homes coming, uh, almost uh, 2,200 students coming in the near future. And this isn't growth tomorrow, this is growth in the next three to eight years. But we have to be prepared for that. But how do we do that when well, we optimize the school district and into the least the, the most thoughtful way of addressing it without impacting you, the parents and students of the district? Well, we didn't just come up with this idea um, on its own. We considered a lot of input from the school board, a lot of direction they give us over time. We looked at several options. On the left hand side, we looked at status quo. How about we build a new elementary, elementary school and, of course, uh, move the sixth grade or re rezone? And uh, each of them, the, the status quo and building a new elementary school, had their pluses. Uh, um, status quo, that means, hey, we just choose not to do anything right now, let's wait and see. Uh, building a new elementary school, while it sort of met the, the requirements, uh, it isn't something that happens very quickly, as you all know. It's also very, very expensive. In addition, it's uh, something that would take some time. So uh, what we looked at in the third option was moving the sixth grade to the junior high. And, and that one checked all the boxes for us. Uh, it, it helps simplify the transportation, which I'll speak to, uh, relieves the capacity, which we saw on the prior slide, 
It, it uh, helps with reducing production of portables and, of course, addresses growth. And it's fiscally responsible, which means we're using your taxpayer money uh, responsibly within the district. So overall, the solution is, hey, we're going to redistrict Lake Asbury area in the sixth grade uh, and have the junior high start offering the sixth grade. Now, this school, without the construction that you see outside, has enough of core capacity, just as even if that building didn't exist, the school has enough capacity in it to absorb the additional students. Um, and this change will affect the 24-25 school year um, uh, fifth graders, and it really it means that the, they'll be attending their junior high one year earlier. Mr. Roski mentioned the, the construction. You can help to see it right, up, right outside. Uh, and, but, and this is a shot of the uh, oak leaf construction. And I show oak leaf an image at the top right because that's a virtual rendering of what it's going to look like when it's all when it's complete. And we're on track to finish that for the 25-26 uh, school year. So there's, uh, that, those, that building will be ready. So to give you a 30,000 foot view of the Lake Asbury Junior High area, this is the Lake Asbury Junior High Zone. And behind there, you can see the construction. I left that on the map so you can get an idea of it, how much of that is encompassed in the Lake Asbury Junior High Zone. And uh, what I want you to take note of is up there at right here, this uh, through here is a section of uh, the Rideout School Zone. Do we have any parents here that are, their children are right out and they're affected by this? Okay, great. Well, this next slide will help you with understanding how this impacts you. This little spur, or I call it right out north, sits just outside the Lake Asbury zone. Most of right out is included within the Lake Asbury Junior High zone. This piece is not. Uh, so uh, we thought, what do we got to do with that? Because uh, it is zoned for uh, Lakeside Junior High for this um, for the seventh grade, but it, there is no sixth grade offered at Lakeside. So uh, our solution was to just move the boundaries of Lake Asbury Junior High slightly uh, to the north uh, northeast. So um, what you'll see is uh, that boundary change, which. Um, if, you're, if your child is a fifth or sixth grader, if they're attending Rideout Elementary School and their home address is north of CR 220, south of Blanding Boulevard, and west of Nightbox, then their new junior high in sixth grade location is Lake Asbury Junior High. So if you sum it all up, this is what ultimately the, the entire process looks like. On the left-hand side, you have the before for the elementary schools uh, that we spoke to. They all currently offer a K through six program. Uh, they, at the beginning of next year, will those students will move to uh, Lake Asbury, uh, and which will become Lake Asbury uh, six through eight. Uh, in, in co some of Copper Gate will go to Oak Leaf 6 through 8, and then after uh, that change is done, then Lake Asbury, Ride Out, Shadow Lawn, uh, and Copper Gate will be uh, shifted to a K through 5 model. Uh, Middleburg and um, Dr. Zinlin will still maintain a 6th grade program. Now, we're not forging new ground here. This approach, the six through eight approach, is used in 65 of 67 school districts in the state of Florida. So this is something that's a very accepted practice, and uh, so we can rest easy that, that this isn't something that's, that's, that's brand new for your child, what well, brand new program-wise. <clears throat> so here's what the timeline looks like. On December 7th, second, there's gonna be a school board workshop. This is a meeting with a that you can attend as a public. And on the Thursday, December 12th, there'll be the school board meeting and a public hearing, which is at the uh, teacher center at Fleming Island High School. And that's a public meeting where you can attend and, and voice your, your opinion uh, 
uh, to the school board. And then, depending on how the school board votes on this recommendation, uh, if they vote yes, then we will go ahead and incorporate this into the 25-26 school year. And that'll start in January and kind of get ready, get everything lined up. So uh, your student will be, be uh, welcome and ready to start. So now hopefully I answered all your questions, but if I didn't, I definitely want to hear it for you. If you'd like to reach out to me, this is my contact information. My job is to speak with folks like you and help you understand this change. Um, I also will be available after uh, the, the uh, meeting. If you're not sure if your student falls into the, the, the zone, I can uh, use a program on my computer and help determine that specifically. So just let me know, flag me down, and uh, we'll take a look together. But with that, I thank you very much for listening, and uh, have a great evening. One, one of the challenges is I've probably seen that presentation uh, probably 15 times by now. I've seen that same presentation, so that makes perfectly good sense to me. It's okay to be sitting out there saying, I, I don't get it. Like, where are we supposed to go? Totally normal, okay? Paul's gonna be here after the meeting. You can go up and ask your individual question, or if you have a question that you'd like to ask, remember there's a card. If you have a card and the card's filled out, we'll come around and collect the cards from you and answer all the questions we can. If it's a really specific question, like related to just you, uh, we can always answer those on an individual basis, okay? So now I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Creel, who's the fine principal of Lake Gasbury Junior High. Thank you very much, Mr. Broski. Thank you for joining us tonight. Can you hear me back there? Yes, thank you. I'm Lydia Creel, the principal of Lake Asbury Junior High School, and I am excited to share with you the vision of what this could look like as we welcome your children to LAJ. I also want to take a moment before we get started to just share the context of why I feel so strongly and am so dedicated to this Lake Asbury community. My husband and I have lived here in Clay County for almost 40 years. We have four children. They all attended Lake Asbury Elementary School next door. They all graduated from Clay schools. One of them is currently a reading teacher at one of our elementary schools. I'm a proud UF grad, go Gators. Yes, I know that can be a contentious statement. And I used to be a classroom teacher. I spent time as a math curriculum specialist for six through 12 here in this district. And this is my eighth year as a school administrator and my second year at Lake Asbury Junior High. So I just want you to know that I am deeply, deeply committed to this community. We have deep roots here and I am just as vested as you are in making sure that we continue the tradition of excellence here at Lake Asbury Junior. As a parent myself, I can understand that you might have some concerns and questions that come along with a change like this. I haven't always been an educator and I have sat where you're sitting right now as my children went to different schools in this district. I just want to assure you that tonight we're here to provide as much clarity as we can. We can share with you our ideas about what we think we can do so far. And again, I just want you to know that we are really, really excited about this possibility. I think it would be great for students. So Lake Asbury Junior High School is celebrating 20 years of excellence this year. When you walk into the lobby of any school in our district or anywhere, you're going to see a vision statement, a mission statement, and these words are really a promise that we make to you, our stakeholders. We make it to our staff and our, and our families and our students, and it's really a vision of what we want our school to be. So it really just boils down to at LAJ, we believe that all means all. We're very proud of the diversity on this campus and the full range of services that we provide to students. I'd like to just briefly introduce our leadership team. It includes our assistant principals, Mr. Daniel Davis, Ms. Jennifer Umbaugh, 
One of our APs that couldn't be here tonight, but we also have our brand new dean with us tonight, Mr. Rodney Rivers. Together, they have a big heart for students and they bring a wealth of expertise to the table. LAJ takes pride in being an A school. Our students consistently perform above the state averages and we've seen some tremendous growth over the last few years. Our focus on academic excellence and the whole student, both in and out of the classroom, really underscore why I believe that LAJ is one of the best schools in this entire district and why it's a great choice for your child. So what you're really here for is you want to know what sixth grade might look like at LAJ. <coughs> so the plan right now is that we would take the sixth graders and for all of their core courses, that's math, language arts, science, and social studies, we would place them in the new building. They would then be integrated into shared spaces during lunch and electives such as band, chorus, or keyboarding. The idea here is that our sixth graders would be housed together for their core academics to provide them with that structure that they're used to, and then also help them to assimilate into the larger campus with all the opportunities that we have here. When it says integrate into shared spaces during lunch, I just want to assure you that it's not a free-for-all. We have a very structured plan for how we operate and we conduct lunches on a daily basis. It's very organized, I promise you. Then our sixth graders will also have opportunities to participate in clubs, campus organizations, and sports tryouts, which again, gives them more opportunities to kind of find their niche we know that in middle school, that's when students are really trying to figure out who they are and what they're interested in. And we're excited to offer them a lot of opportunities to do that. We will have a Discover LAJ night on February the 25th. We typically hold this in our gym. There are lots and lots of tables set up all around the gym and we have people there to talk to you about all the programs that we have on our campus. Our school counselors are there, your administrative team is there, and lots of teachers and club sponsors. And it's really a lot of fun. The Roar Tour is a half-day orientation for students, and we have one in the morning and one in the afternoon. We divide the students up so that we, the groups are not too large. It's a great team bonding and team building activity. They get to visit the campus. And again, it gives them a little bit more familiarity with what Lake Asbury Junior High School is all about. And then just a few days before school starts, we have a Walk the Campus event. With schedules in hand, you and your student walk the campus. Again, it's more familiarity before the first day of school. You get to see where the cafeteria, the clinic, the gym, what the lockers look like, and all of those things that make middle school a special, a special time. Then open house is scheduled during the first few weeks of school, and our commitment to you is to continue to communicate via newsletters, email, robocalls, and of course, social media. So we pride ourselves on serving all students at Lake Asbury, and we have a full range of programs, including ESC and 504 services, we have advanced and gifted courses, an excellent fine arts program, an award-winning CTE program, and a Tiger Success Lab. I just want you to know that we do have a full range of programs here and we want to work with you to make sure that your student is set up for success. So student life at Lake Asbury is built around creating opportunities for fun while they're learning. It includes dances and pep rallies. We have spirit weeks, which are lots of fun for dress up days. And sometimes even charitable events. This week on Wednesday, we will host a one mile turkey trot right here on campus where students donate $5 to the American Heart Association. And the best thing about that is our top three winners actually take home a frozen turkey, much to the chagrin of some of our students. Along with that vision of creating a place where everyone belongs, we have all of these many campus organizations and activities. You'll see that we have a very active FFA club. We have TSA, Future Business Leaders of America. We have a chess club. And if any of you are interested, looking ahead to next year, 
currently looking for someone to be the fishing club sponsor. So come on down if you're interested in that. So I would like to also share that two of our largest organizations on campus include the Fellowship of Christian Athletes and then also the D&D Club. For those of you who don't know what D&D is, that's Dungeons and Dragons. And I can tell you that that requires a great deal of critical thinking, and it's one of our most popular organizations here at LAJ. In addition to pushing students to do their best academically, character building is a big part of our culture too. We use the ROAR acronym, excuse me, to, to help our students understand that it's always important to be kind, to be respectful in their actions and words. We want them to be on time, accountable to themselves and each other, and of course, responsible. And we do this again through pushing every week our students to rise to these character traits, and we also know that this helps foster a safe, civil, and respectful campus. It's also important that we celebrate success, and we do this through weekly work awards. We have pep rallies, honor roll cookouts. We have a roar store where students use their tiger tokens to purchase goodies. And we have mentoring, attendance rewards. And this activity day that you see at the top is something that we started last year. It's usually on a test day, or it's on one of the half days. Every single teacher on this campus volunteers to host some sort of an activity in their classroom at the end of the school day. This means that every student is to participate in something, whether they have transportation or whether they make the team or not. And these activities range from line dancing to bound ball to crochet to uno competitions, chess club, just about anything that their teacher is interested in and they get to sign up for it. So that's a lot of fun. We also had a Veterans Day program here that was largely student-led by the children of our military families. And this was also an experience that every single student on our campus was able to participate in. We have community partnerships with volunteers, churches, our local Waste Not Want Not who serve some of our neediest families. And we know that these enrich both staff and student experiences too. We welcome guest speakers to come in and talk to our students, and we've even had some, some space station astronauts come here and talk to our kids. These community connections are so important, and I'm so glad that you're here tonight, because really, these connections benefit all of us. The truth is, these students are a reflection of us, they're a reflection of you, and they are our best hope for the future. So together, I know that we can continue to have a place where all of these students will thrive and be successful. Please know that we are thrilled, thrilled about the possibility of having sixth graders here at LAJ. I am, this, this community has a strong legacy of support and I am really proud to work alongside their staff, our school board members, our district leadership, and Mr. Broski to continue this program of excellence here. So thank you so much for listening to me talk about all the great things at LAJ, and thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Krill. Ms. Krill does an excellent job here. Ray Gasberg Jr. High has a lot of proud tradition here. I don't know if you really heard this from Mr. Beeman when he was talking. The idea of sixth graders going to a building, 65 of 67 school districts. That is the configuration. It's only Clay County and one other district in the entire state of Florida that has a different configuration. So I know that that idea might be new to you, or it might not be. In Clay County, uh, Oak Leaf Junior High was six through eight until recently. Green Cove Junior High was six through eight until recently. In addition, our neighbor to the, uh, to the east that will remain nameless, their configuration is K-8 in the same building. So the idea of having six, seven, eight together is really not a, a foreign thing, to be honest with you. 
Okay, I got some questions here from some folks. Maybe possible that we're not able to answer your question if uh, you didn't get a card or whatnot. We'll be glad to answer it to start that discussion. But here we go. I'm going to do my best to read the question and give it to the right person to answer it. Okay, so this first one is for Ms. Creole. It's talking about sixth graders are going to be offered the same extracurricular activities that they would have had, uh, such as sports clubs, dance, and events. Uh, at school. So will they have those opportunities? Yes, that's correct. All of our campus organizations will be open to all of our students, six through eight. Of course, tryouts, there's, there's tryouts for all of these sports teams. And so I just want you to think a lot about cross country because one of my favorite things about cross country is there's no tryout. You show up, you go to the practices, you get to go to the meets, and that's one of my favorite things. But yes, we're going to have as many things open to our sixth graders as possible. And I know that one of the things, by the way, I was a junior high principal, seven through eight. Um, I see some familiar faces in the crowd with, with folks. One of the things I always said about being a, a junior high principal that was difficult is sometimes a student comes in in seventh grade and you finally get things the way, the way they should be. And then you have eighth grade and then they're gone. Right, you realize in elementary school, K through five, that's many years, then all of a sudden you get to junior high, it's only two years, right? It is really difficult to get consistency and continuity in such a short time frame. I know that one of the benefits of six through eight configuration, any parents of a student that plays an instrument, right, anybody? or musically talented chorus folks, right? Imagine one more year of being involved in a program like that. Uh, students would be eligible for athletics and all of those types of opportunities. Here's an easy one, Ms. Creole. What time does school start and end? We're going to the basics, right? So the first bell for the first class rings at 9.30 and we get out every afternoon at 3.42. We do have students come into the cafeteria in the morning at 9 o'clock. We open the doors. We keep our students in here to have breakfast, or they can sit at tables and talk with their friends for about 20 minutes. And then we release them out at 9.25. that answer your question? OK, here's, here's some other questions. Sometimes it's the same question asked a different way, depending on who's asking you. One, it says, um, as the plan addresses growth concerns, specifically in Lake Asbury, do you see any changes for other elementary and middle schools in future years? That's a great question. And as always, when you're dealing with growth, you have to look at the economic factors, whether the growth continues or whether it slows down. However, at this point in time, there is a long range plan and I mean long range, it's not in a year or two to convert all of the uh, junior high schools to a sixth to eighth grade configuration. So the answer is simply yes. Right? You have to consider that in, in the future. How many years out that is really depends on that. So I always look at growth, like when we look at uh, hurricane predictions and they go up, the newscaster goes up to the map and you see this cone the cone of uncertainty, the further the hurricane's out, the harder it is to predict what's going to happen five, seven, ten days out. But the closer it gets, the easier it is to see. Well, growth works the same way, right? Right now, the two hottest areas in Clay County, Lake Asbury and Oakleaf, are those two areas. Now, there, there is Saratoga Springs, and there's Governor's Park, and there's other developments that will be built. That will take years to get to that point. So he, he's correct in the answer, yes. Everything's on the table each year. You heard me say Green Cove had a sixth grade configuration at one time. You heard me say Oak Leaf had a, had a sixth grade configuration at one time. In fact, I think it opened K-8 at, at Oak Leaf uh, Junior High, and then went six, seven, and eight, and then went seven, eight over time. So that's, that's not unusual. Now we have a specific question. Mike, the problem is my arms are only so long. My child is zoned for Middleburg Elementary, attends Shadow Lawn, zoned for 7th and 8th grade for Lake Asbury Junior High. Will they go here 6th, 7th, and 8th consistently? 
the answer to that question is yes. If you are zoned for Lake Asbury Junior High and you're in Chattawan, you will go to Lake Asbury Junior High. Again, we'll be available after if you do have more questions about it. Uh, student currently enrolled in Middleburg Elementary and zoned to go to Lake Asbury Junior High. Can you confirm that students will, in fact, join Lake Asbury Junior High for sixth grade and then and not be at Middleburg Elementary? That's a question I can help you with. The, the, uh, it's, it's difficult to describe the exact boundary separation in, within the Middleburg End of Elementary Zone and Lake Asbury, but if you know for certain that your zone for Lake uh, Asbury Junior High, you will go to Lake Asbury Junior High. There's about 14 students that fall in that category. What happens to Wright Elementary students for seventh and eighth grade? So if you're in Rideout Elementary, as what I showed in my presentation, a small portion of Rideout is currently outside of Lake Asbury Junior High Zone. So if you are a sixth grader and you're in Rideout and you're in that small section, then you would go, your, your child would go to Lake Asbury Junior High. If you're a seventh grader and you're going to, then you're currently zoned for Lakeside Junior High. You, you if you'd like to go to uh, like Asbury Junior, you can do an SP, uh, a special, um, ap apply to go to Lake Asbury Junior. Oh, sorry. If you are in the zone for Lake Asbury Junior, and that little portion that he said is going to be rezoned, then you will be zoned. However, if you choose to remain at Lakeside, because that is your current zone, then you can put in an SPR to remain at Lakeside. Those seventh grade students, current seventh grade students, will have the choice of either coming to Lake Asbury, which they will be future zoned for, or remaining at uh, Lakeside Junior High, but they will have to put in an SBR to remain at that school. Here's a transportation question. Will students of Chatelon Elementary staff members still be bused to Lake Asbury Junior High? Uh, element or the uh, requirements for transportation will still be the same. As long as you are outside of the two mile uh, zone, uh, then transportation will still be provided. Uh. Here's some interesting ones. What's the class size? The class size is the same. You know, it's, it's a statewide number. Is there a YMCA program here at? There is not a YMCA program here at Lake Asbury Junior High School, and the class size is 22. Will sixth graders be integrated with eighth graders? So again, the plan right now is that our sixth graders will have their core academic subjects, and that's math, social studies, science, and language arts together in a sixth grade cohort. As far as electives are concerned, it's our expectation that we're going to integrate them in some places. And so for instance, band would be a place where in beginning band, you could have sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. You could have a keyboarding class where you had sixth and seventh graders in there. And so right now, we're, we have an expectation that in some cases, they will be integrated together for electives. Switching over to ESE services, how will sixth graders in ESE programs be handled? So the answer to that question is a little bit complex because as we know, there are a lot of different programs for exceptional student education. All of our schools in Clay County have inclusive opportunities, so that will not be changing. Um, for instance, Lake Asbury Elementary does have programs for students with autism. So does Lake Asbury Junior. So that will be an easy um, move right over from LAE to LAJ. There are some other programs that it's a little more nuanced and it's going to really take um, us looking at each individual student to determine the best placement for them. We have already started at the ESE district office meeting with the specialists. Several of our administrators have already been meeting with our program specialists and looking at each of those students, student by student, and rest assured as a parent of a student who might be having a change with that, 
you will be contacted by one of those program specialists or one of the administrators, and you'll be a part of that discussion. You can also reach out to the ESE office if you have specific questions or concerns. Um, and myself and Mrs. Davis, who's one of the supervisors in the ESE, we're here, and we'll be here afterward if anyone has a particular question they want to ask. So one question to ask, why not build a new school? Rather than putting a wing on there, the, the, simple, the simple answer to that is the cost. Roughly to build a new school, we're looking at about $60 million. To build a wing, you're looking at less than half of that in order to do that. In addition, the state has a formula that doesn't allow you to just build a school. It's like, if we wanted to build like two schools in Lake Asbury, we wouldn't be able to just do a new school without a state approval on that. It doesn't work that way. So that's one thing. The second part of the question was about sports. Will teams of sixth grades competing with other sixth graders, or will they be on the seventh and eighth grade team? Ms. Pickett, do you want to? The sixth, seventh, and eighth graders will be together. So that's why uh, Ms. Krill suggested the great thing about cross country is there's no, no cuts there, track, things like that. But they will compete as a middle school team. One said, hey, good question. For fifth graders, how do we prepare them for the transition? And if we do that each time there is a transition, as far as fifth graders, we'd have to prepare the fifth graders for a transition the same way we would with, with the sixth graders. But great question. Next question, Lake, Lake Asbury Elementary, there's a higher level math class for sixth graders. Uh, will there be an opportunity for advanced math for sixth graders coming here? Absolutely, we have advanced courses for all of their core content areas, just like they do at the elementary school, and then moving on for seventh and eighth grade as well. We encourage that, and again, we're gonna do our best to place them in the best, best possible place where they can be successful. And then I'm gonna say one more thing about the sports. There's also, I see our cheerleading coach over there. I know that she also encourages sixth, seventh, and eighth graders to try out for cheerleading too. Will there be a STEAM program for sixth graders? We are going to keep STEAM as seventh and eighth grade. So um, we will, the sixth graders will come in, they'll still have all the honors courses, they'll have all the options, but STEAM will remain seventh and eighth grade only. Here's one that's asking, will sixth graders be in the new building or will they be in portable classrooms? Okay, again, the plan is to house our sixth graders for their core content classes in the new build. That's where we're going to put the sixth graders, in the brand new building, the new 32 classroom building over here. Is it possible that they might have an elective that would be in a portable? That's possible. I can't guarantee that at this time, but I can promise you that they will spend the majority of their day in the new building. I have a similar question. Will they be isolated or away from the seventh and eighth graders? And that you hear the answer is they'll be in polite classes for English, math, science, social studies, but there might be the occasion where they're in a class with others, such as beginning band might have sixth, seventh, and eighth graders in the same class. Uh, will the fifth graders be treated as sixth graders with graduation, dedicated passes, and yearbook and such? Parents, all I can say is all of the elementary principals are sitting right there and they, they, they hear you. So I, I guess the big concern is that that um, fifth graders would be, uh, wouldn't have the same uh, end of the year festivities as another one. We hear you loud and clear, they hear you too. Like how to, how to make that transition because you feel like it's kind of a, a rite of passage at the end of this year. Is that, how many people, raise your hand if that was one of your, one of your big concerns. Okay, so I, I'm going to do this. I, I hate to put them on spot. We're committed to making sure that that fifth grade year is meaningful to your child before they go. So it's on, it's on camera. It's being recorded. So there you, there you go. We're going to do our best to make sure it's a great year for those students that, that are going to transition. Thank you. 
Um, here's one about safety and security, which is dear, dear, near and dear to my heart. Uh, safety and security measures. There are several safety and security measures. I think it's the concern is uh, having more students here. This this building, even with the influx of sixth graders, would be about roughly half the size of some of the other schools within our district. Right. So the safety and security aspect is something that we keep uh, very sacred and it's very serious, of course. So many items related to safety and security that are in place now from um, uh, Glen County Sheriff's officers to guardians to uh, panic buttons. It's, it's a whole thing related to safety and security. You drop your child off at school, you expect us to keep them safe, and rightly so. We have many things in place in order to ensure that's the case here at Lake Asbury Junior High. Um, here's somebody asking. Um, if you live in the Lake Asbury Junior High zone, but your child is on the lottery at a school and outside the school zone, are they still eligible to migrate? in the switch. I would ask that person to just kind of come up at the end so we can understand your question a little better. I'm not sure what you're asking there. Here's one. Uh, currently entering sixth grade students for the STEAM program are upcoming fifth graders. I think we answered that one already. And then why was the decision not made at the beginning of the school year uh, related to that? Well, this kind of is the beginning of the school year when you look at the planning phase for school years. We start, we start in January actually uh, looking at staffing. So we recognize another light question was um, related to teachers. You know, there's, uh, yes, it's true, some teachers from the elementary schools would be coming to Lake Asbury Junior High. That would be a natural thing. There's plenty of positions. Every teacher will have a position or a job related to, to their employment. Um, and this one was kind of similar in saying, hey, would require that many to re be replaced at my current school. Yes, this is the beginning of that, and uh, we're committed to making sure that every person has a position, and there's a process in place in order to do that. We've done that before, um, probably about six or seven times during my, during my time frame, so we're quite familiar with doing that, so we'll make sure that we do that in a fair way to everybody involved. Is there any other cards? Like, okay, cards coming. Uh, do we have the option to send our kids to another elementary if we choose to make to make the move? If you live within that attendance zone, that's your that's your prerogative to do that. If you live within the attendance zone where you're moving, you would then go to a new school. But we would not be accepting SPRs. Why are Shadow Lawn sixth graders being moved uh, if they still have empty classrooms and are not overcrowded? I don't know if you noticed the development going right in front of Shadow Lawn. Well, Shadow Lawn is it's bisected by the Lake Asbury Zone, Junior High Zone. And our goal was to put as many sixth graders in Lake Asbury and Junior High as we could. But there was ample uh, remaining students to maintain a sixth grade class at Shadow Lawn. So we made that decision to, to uh, move some of them and keep remaining with the other ones at Shadow Lawn. No, that's, no, so Shadow Lawn, all sixth graders, all moving sixth graders, so current fifth graders, will go to Lake Asbury Junior High. The question was, if you have space available in Shadow Lawn Elementary, then why not keep them there? The reason why is because we are moving all fifth graders to the Lake Asbury Junior High Zone, and if you look around Shadow Lawn, there are 725 homes that will envelop Shadow Lawn Elementary. We have to create space in those schools to be able to accommodate the growth in the area. So, is there a home economics class here? We do have a class that's referred to as consumer science. 
And so that is long ago and far away when I was in school, it was called Home Ec, and now we call it Consumer and Family Science. And so it includes some of those components of what we used to call Home Ec. So here's, here's a, I think, probably a good question to answer, which is sixth graders being in a setting with seventh and eighth graders, what if we don't want our child in that same setting with sixth graders? Who would we reach out to express that to? So, so um, I would say Ms. Creel would be the person to express that too. But I've reminded you, I think six or seven times, pretty much six, seven, and eight is the norm everywhere across the state of Florida. This isn't abnormal. But if you have concerns, just like you have any concern about your child reaching out to the administration of the school is the way to go in order to, to express your concern, whatever that concern may be. So on to the next one. Will Spanish be offered to 7th and 8th or 6th, 7th and 8th, Spanish? So right now, Spanish is offered to 7th and 8th graders. As far as what, whether or not we're going to be able to offer that to 6th graders, I'm going to be honest with you and tell you that remains to be seen. We hope to have a full schedule of electives for you by the time the course catalog comes out at the end of January, the beginning of February. And so I can't, I'm not going to make a promise that I can't keep right now, but I certainly appreciate the request. What does a sixth grade cohort mean? A sixth grade cohort is just a fancy way of saying it's a sixth grade class. It's all of the sixth graders together as they move forward. Just like we would say, instead of the, the class of seventh graders, it would be a seventh grade cohort. Okay, let's do this. I think that, that's it for the cards, but you probably have a question, right? So we're all gonna be here to answer any questions that you have on an individual basis. Let me just say this. Lake Asbury Junior High is a, great, is a great place for students to go to school. So hopefully you came here, got some information. You might still have some other questions, which is fine, uh, related to the move. But that's it for the formal program. So if you have a question, I know the folks from operation will be here, folks from transportation, the school principal will be here. I'll certainly be here to answer any questions you have. So thank you for coming out this evening.